Proverbs chapter 31, we'll launch from this passage, if you'd look with me, please, in Proverbs chapter 31. We'll try not to keep you long. That's what Elizabeth Taylor always said. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 28, the Bible says, Her children arise up and call her blessed her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Look at verse 30 and read it, please, with me aloud. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Heavenly Father, thank you for the music that we have enjoyed. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony. Thank you, Lord, for the example of so many of these mothers who have stood and lord they've gone to death's door to bring life into this world thank you god for their faithfulness and their dependence upon thee now lord i pray that you'd speak to us here today as the holy spirit seems to act in a mothering way bringing us to christ i pray lord that you would speak to our hearts lord if there's someone here that does not know you in the pardon and the forgiveness of sin Lord, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Lord, speak to each heart, I pray. We thank you for what you're going to do. In advance, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, we're not going to take as much time as we could. And we know that you have a lot of things going on with the family. And, and uh, it's the nature of the day, nature of the day. So I, I'm just going to give you uh, these first couple of points and, and perhaps another time uh, we will uh, explore this, what the Bible has to say about the godly woman and her testimony. The godly woman and her testimony. If you do not have a testimony for Jesus Christ, you do not have a message to share. You do not have an opportunity of a hearing of that uh, of that uh, uh, message. You have to have a testimony that backs up the message. And that's, that's got a lot of preaching in it. And uh, we're going to, we're going to pass right on past that, ladies. To number two, the godly woman and her teaching. Not just her testimony, but her teaching. D.L. Moody said that he owed everything in his ministry it was accomplished for God to his mother. Now, that's a bold statement by a great evangelist that was used on two continents to bring crowds of people to Christ through salvation. She taught. His mother taught. And I could go on to talk about Susanna Wesley. I could talk about Robert Moffat's mother, the great missionary Robert Moffat. And I could, I could just go on and on about how her children arise up and call her blessed. I could talk about my mother. And I could talk about the impact and the influence that she has had on my life. The teaching. And you don't just teach with your lips. You must teach with your lips, but you must also back it up with your life. It's worth so many sermons. <laughs> a godly woman in her teaching. But here this morning, let's pause for a few moments as on this subject, the godly woman and her tasks. The godly woman and her tasks. You see, the testimony is something that, that's between you and God, you maintain before Him, and has to do with your character, not your reputation, but your character. Your character will outlive your reputation. Mark that down. Your character will outlive your reputation. And so what people think is one day going to peter out. It's one day going to be washed away. But your character is what God knows you to be, and that will always remain. And so your testimony is important, and, and, and your teaching is important. But your tasks are what you put your hands on. Ladies, we're not going to talk about ironing and washing and cleaning the house and these kinds of things. We're not talking. We're talking about as a as a 
a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, what are the tasks of a godly woman? Number one, a godly woman must be a worshiper, must worship the Lord. Now, you will worship something. Every man, woman, and child will worship something or someone. There'll be a pursuit, a hobby. There'll be a, a, a behavior. There'll be a possession that you will exchange, as it were, your soul to obtain. What you worship colors every part of your life. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, uh, describes how woman, women should worship in church. Say, well, that sounds restrictive. No, it's a guidance. It's a guidance. It describes how men should worship in church. The Bible is our guidebook. The Bible is our manual for our... If the Bible did not tell us uh, what to do, we'd be to our own recognizance. So, ladies, if, if you want to, look at 1 Corinthians 11 uh, sometime, and you can, you can see what the Bible says, what God says, not what a preacher says, not what a denomination says, but what the Bible says, God's Word teaches about women worshiping. It is crucial. It is crucial. We find that Anna worshiped daily in the temple. Uh, moms and dads, let me extend this beyond the, beyond the ladies. Our children need to observe us worshiping the Lord. They need to see something real. I'm not talking about coming to worship service. I'm not talking about being here on Mother's Day or Easter, Christmas, and, and, uh, and most Sunday mornings. I'm talking about worshiping the Lord in awe and wonder when you see a beautiful, majestic sunset and you say, boy, God gave us beautiful things to look at. Gorgeous. The majesty of his artistry. Lord, thank you. Do you realize that when you're doing that, you're not putting on a show, you're not, you're not uh, trying to uh, say, oh, here's, here's worship now, let me show you, let me show you. No, you're, you're doing it. You're doing it. And our children, our grandchildren, they need to see us in action worshiping the Lord. So a lot of, a lot of things we could say about this, a lot of things. When you come to church, Please don't just go through the motions. Think about what you are singing during congregational music. That is why we have it. Some people think we do congregational music simply to move people around. <laughs> you know, it could be that we contribute. But the less it could be that we contribute to this, this thought because we're wanting to conserve time and so during the congregational song, we kind of just go through the motions and people are just moving around and doing stuff. But when we sing, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. When you think about that, that ministers to your heart when God ministers to your heart, then you reach out with an attitude of worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's what worshiping corporately. Someone else continues singing when you can't. When you get choked up, then the, co the corporate worship, the, the, the congregation continues singing and you're enraptured in it. It doesn't happen the same time, the same way. It doesn't happen in the same song. It doesn't happen. It happens as the Spirit of God moves. Are you a worshiper? That is essential for a godly woman to be a worshiper of the Lord. Number two, she must not only be a worshiper, but a worker. A worker. The Bible says in Romans 16, 1, the Phoebe, uh, she was called a servant of the church. A servant of the church. I began making a list. Brother Brian, you're one of our ushers back here. And uh, your dear wife is there. Chris, good to see you, sir. They're one of their sons here, here with them. Uh, Brother Brian, we see, we see people in, we see ladies in the nursery. We see ladies teaching Sunday school. We see ladies in the junior church. 
We see ladies cleaning on Friday mornings. We see uh, ladies singing uh, in music. We see ladies helping with the uh, counting the offerings. We see ladies, I mean, just, it just goes on and on and on. Everywhere you look, ladies are serving the Lord, finding a place to fit in. If you don't serve the Lord in the church, I have one word for you. Why? Why? Well, there's nothing for me to do. Oh, really? I dare you. Come up and say, hey, I don't have a job to do in the church. Can you point me in a good direction? I dare you to ask us that. Uh, pastors have, have lists of things. Um, but, you know, serving the Lord, please do it as unto the Lord and not unto men, not unto women, not unto the preacher. Do it unto the Lord. Anything that you can do. The greatest day in my life is when I learned to bag groceries for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the greatest day in my life. I realized that I could do something, no matter what it is, I could do it. Lord, are you happy with this? I'm bagging groceries. I'm, 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 I'm racking bottles. Anybody remember racking bottles? Oh, you didn't do that. Okay, thank you, Robert. You know, pop used to come in bottles. They were glass, and they would, you know, and they would collect them and things, and I'd be back there in the back room, and everybody else would be making tips for, for bagging groceries, you know, and the manager would stick me in the back room racking bottles. No tips. And I'd just be, I'd just be back there, and, and, and I'm, 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 I'm outside in a fenced-in area, you know, and, and uh, things, because people would steal them. And, and so I'm out there in a fence and, and, and racking them, and we're supposed to go according to size and all that kind of thing. And I'm thinking, man, they're getting extra money, and they're going to be able to eat lunch on that money, and I'm not going to get to. And I'd think, wait a minute. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do with all thy might. And do it as unto the Lord and not unto men. Lord, you're my manager. You're my boss. Am I doing okay? How, how's this? How's this? And, and I wasn't being sarcastic. I mean, I was sensing his presence. When, you're, when you come in on a Friday and, and you are cleaning the nursery, ladies, so that all those microbes and bacteria and germs and all that kind of thing is, is off all the toys and everything's sanitized and all that kind of thing. You're not doing it for those babies. You're doing it for Jesus Christ. You need to be a worker. A worker. Find something to do for Jesus. A worshiper is a godly woman. A worker, we find, is a godly woman. A witness. A godly woman must be a witness. Ladies... Help your man out, okay? You carry something called a purse. Now, some of them look more like suitcases, but you carry a purse usually. And uh, I, I, I refuse to carry a purse. I just refuse to. There are times my wife has a load of stuff, and she has to carry it out. She said, would you please carry my purse? She's the only person I will carry a purse for. Brother Mike, this is how I carry her purse. I take it and I put it up under my arm. I won't carry it by the straps. I carry it up under my arm. That's how I do it. And I, and I walk out. But she's got a lot of stuff in that purse. And she's got it organized. She knows exactly where things are and all that kind of thing. And, and uh, ladies, do you have tracks in your purse? Do you have, do you have tracks? Uh, you've got... You know, guys, we, we're, we're limited, you know. Uh, if we put tracks in our, in our wallet back here, it won't be presentable. It won't be presentable. Sometimes in the heat of summer, and if we, if we carry tracks right here, they get very limp. They're damp, you know. And so there are times, I have to say this, there are times that I haven't had a track. My wife always has tracks. She's always a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been able to get tracks from her. A godly woman is a witness, not just in, in, in a track, but also in her lips. 
also in the things that she says, in her lifestyle. A godly woman is a witness. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1 talks about how a saved wife can lead her unsaved husband to Christ. And let me tell you something. It's not through preaching out of the mouth. Ladies, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you here. The Bible does not indicate that you probably are going to be the one to sit down with the Bible and lead your husband to the Lord. But hear me, please. Your life will be undeniable because he will know you better than anyone on the planet. And you could be the best Christian that he knows. I mean, you put up any preacher or any evangelist or any televangelist or mega pastor or whatever, he'll know that you are the real deal. He'll know that. And your life will lead him to Christ. Somebody else will come along and just pluck the fruit. Somebody else will come along and and preach a message, and he'll walk an aisle. He'll raise his hand and say, I trust in Christ as my Savior. Somebody else will be the one to actually pull the trigger, but you're the one who loaded it up. You're the one who made the difference. A witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Must be a worshiper, a worker, a witness. A godly woman must be a warrior. Not worrier. <laughs> Make sure you understood what I was saying. Not a worrier, okay? Uh, it's very easy for us to worry about things. I'm talking about being a warrior in prayer, a prayer warrior. I'm mindful of Acts chapter 1, verse 4, Acts chapter 12, verse 12, where the women were in the church and they were praying there in the early church. And God did miraculous things, miraculous things. The men and the women praying together. I'm mindful of a lady named Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. She prayed and wrestled with the Lord. She fought in prayer and The answer to her prayer blessed an entire nation. Samuel was born. And because she wrestled with God and asked God, please give me a son. Please, God, and if you give me a son, I will give him to you all the days of his life. And a whole nation was blessed because she was a prayer warrior. Because she believed God was able to do the impossible. If you're going to be a godly woman, you're going to have to be a warrior Not this mamsy-pamsy kind of prayer life. I'm talking about going to the mat, as it were, for that child, for that son, for that daughter, for that marriage, for that wayward husband, and praying and praying and praying and praying till light breaks through. Squire Parsons used to sing a song. The title of the song was Hello Mama. And the story was that this, this young man stopped off the side of the road at a payphone. There, there used to be such a thing as payphones. <laughs> and he called late one night after God got a hold of his heart at a revival meeting. He was far away from home, and he called his mother. It was late, but he figured that she probably would take his call. And she, she answered the phone, and the voice on the other end said, Hello, Mama. I just called to tell you, all those tears you shed for me, they were not in vain. Do you have a broken heart before God for those that need God's touch the most? She must be a warrior. And last, she must be a window. A window. Jot down this passage, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. 2 Timothy 1, verse 5, if you want to turn with me, please, this will be the last passage that we, that we look at. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Excuse me, I misspoke. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, 
and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also. They were a window to God's grace. People could look and specifically, huh, this little boy, Timothy, specifically he could look through the life of his grandmother and look through the life of his mother and could see Jesus. That's just as simple as it gets. Do people see Jesus in you? If so, then I can't find a better description or definition of a godly woman than if people see Jesus in you. Are you a window? Are you a clean window, a clear window? Would you bow your heads with me, please? Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed.